So, Mona, what can we say about the uh, developmental history of art and uh, human um, anthropological cultural evolution? I would think that's the biggest puzzle of them all, in my mind anyway. Why do people create art? It is, you know, it, it's such a costly thing to do where hmm. it, it's not clear what the benefit for the individual is, right? So if we think back, some of the earliest art that we're aware of, just a few months ago, they found in Borneo um, some new cave paintings that were produced 40,000 years ago. And I imagine back in those days, people had lots of things to worry about. And the question arises, why did they spend their time making art? So, so it, it, it's a puzzle why humanity throughout history have spent enormous amounts of time, resources, and efforts in creating art on one hand, but then also appreciating art. Mm -hmm. uh, so one then has to consider, well, is there some obvious benefit to it? Perhaps not so much to the individual, but to the community in which the art is, is uh, produced. Um, and I suppose one, one interesting way of looking at it is in a similar way as we would look to um, any sort of prosocial behavior or altruistic behavior, um, where the question also is why would, why would people do something costly to them, right? Why, do, why should I help you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, what, what do I get out of helping you? It, it just, you know, it takes time and effort for me. Uh, and I suppose one explanation has been, well, one has to look at the larger context of the group of um, who benefits overall, even if you have or I have a bit of a sacrifice, perhaps our community benefits in some way. So that argument has been made with any sort of altruistic or seemingly altruistic behavior. And perhaps one can make a similar argument with aesthetics or art, where there's some, some benefit, some adaptive um, advantage of of that whole process, whether it's the creation, the appreciation of art, and so on. Is that an absolute requirement to be an adaptive process? And um, this is the evolutionary yes. uh, mantra. It's always, that's right, of course, first of all, it's always hard to quote unquote prove any sort of evolutionary sure. argument. Sure. But at the same time, but that seems an intellectual foundational a, assumption. And that's I'm, right, I'm yes. Sure. I mean, there are crazy people who do things that are not in any interest. Yes. And sometimes they well, create but great if, art. Yes, that's right. Sure, sure. But of <laughs> course, there are crazy people in, in many respects and people do crazy things. But if we think on average or across times, so again, 40,000 years ago, that's when all this right, right, at least right. started. And it creation of art has continued throughout a long time across many cultures, pretty much all cultures that we're aware of. So it stands to reason that there are there is there, something behind it like very likely that is useful whether it's still useful or adaptive in the same sense today that's a different question yeah, sure but um you no, know that, one that's could what look i'm challenging sure. in a way because that that is a uh, a, a kind of a conventional wisdom yes. assumption as you look back in history everything has to be yes. uh, adaptive or that's right. you analyze the cost that's of right. it and yes. fitness and whether that's it's right. altruistic that's right. fitness for the group or sure. the individual those sure. are the arguments that's right yes but can it not well, be just some random fluctuation in the mentality yes. of human beings that does crazy things that's right that, that's that right sure that's right and that's where that's where empirical testing comes in right mm -hmm. that's where we take the approach of cognitive science experimental psychology yeah. mm -hmm. to say that okay well just to take one example, let's, let's hypothesize that there is a social aspect to art. And we can, people, we can put people in experimental situations where there is some, you know, let's say a group context where somebody is the designated artist and asked, okay, now here, you know, paint something that conveys a certain meaning or that, me that is meaningful to you. Or we can give all kinds of instructions, compare that to the same uh, situation where it's the person by themselves without any social context and then look at the effect of that so, so in a very simplified way trying to get at well what is the social element in art production if is there one of course that would be difficult to figure out perhaps that group context I just described is not the right way of looking at it one would have to try out lots of things but in principle at least these are testable questions 